This is a short introduction to HTML. If you've never hand-coded HTML before, what we'll be doing in this tutorial is going over the very basics. What we're going to use for this is Adobe Edge Code. And we're going to use this because it's a free download and because it's available for both Mac and PC. So it should be easy for people to get a hold of it as long as you have a good internet connection. So what you want to do to get started first is create a folder on your computer somewhere where you can find it and go ahead, name it, and what you're going to do, you can see I have this folder here, week7-html-css. You're going to open that folder in Adobe Edge Code. You just go to File, Open Folder, and then you'll notice that your folder will appear here in that left-hand corner. And then we're going to start a new document. So we have a document, it's inside of our new folder, and we're going to take a look at what a very, very basic web page looks like. And they start first with the doc type, the document type declaration. And we're going to use the basic doc type uh, for HTML5, which is very simple. It's doc type space HTML. And it closes like that. And that just tells the browser how it's supposed to interpret what's coming next. So let's get started with our HTML itself. HTML is uh, a language, but it's not a programming language. It's a way to describe content on the page. So you're describing the structure of content with HTML. And HTML is comprised of elements. Elements have open and closed tags generally. And they look like this. The HTML element. First, let's the document know that the HTML is about to begin. Like so. And we can close it. Like so. Oops. Learn how to type. So here we have our first element, the HTML element. It has an opening tag and a close tag. And everything that's going to be or appear inside of this HTML page is going to appear in between these two tags. So I'm going to make some space. The next element we're going to talk about is the head element, like so. And the head element also closes the same way that the HTML element does. So I hope you're starting to see a pattern here. There's also a body element, and the body element is where everything that you see on a web page appears. And there's a difference between what goes in the head and what goes in the body of a document. What generally appears in the head of a document is more meta information, things that you don't see rendered on the page, generally. So things like uh, the description for the page, any keywords, uh, any JavaScript that you're going to connect, any kind of CSS style sheets, all those things are going to show up in the head of the document, and also the title element. So we can add a title here. And the title will just usually appears at the top of the browser, Chrome, or in the tab if you're using a tabbed browser. So this is our basic HTML page set in between our title tags here. I'm going to save any changes first before we go any further so we don't lose them. And so we can see some of the code hinting, too, that goes on inside of Adobe Edge Code. I'm going to name this document index.html. Documents that are named index, home, default, are by default rendered as the home page or the default view from a folder uh, by a web browser. So usually when you start building a web page from scratch, you're going to start with an index.html file or something similar home, default, yeah. So now you see we have uh, some coloring going on here with our tags, and we'll get some code hinting as we continue to type. This is the most basic web page that you can have. Technically, we don't need that title element. So you're just setting up the containers for, for the page right now. If I 
preview this page and I just clicked this preview icon in the upper right hand corner you see it looks blank right now it's because we haven't actually put content here we're just describing the structure of this page so let's add a little bit of content and it'll be the cliche hello world course so hello world and now you can see there's hello world on our page in the browser we haven't actually described hello world we haven't given it any structure so let's take a look at some of the tags we can use to do this first the paragraph tag or the paragraph element rather will be more precise so now we could type in uh, something for our paragraph So we have our first paragraph you can see it's showing up here inside of our browser if we wanted a second paragraph we would open up a new paragraph element it doesn't have to be capitalized so all right so my second paragraph and so on I, if I had actual text I would put it in here this is just generic so we're describing semantically to the browser the structure of whatever we put in here inside of our elements. Aside from the paragraph element, we also have headlines. And if you think about the analogy of a newspaper, headlines are very similar on an HTML page. If you think of the masthead of the newspaper, think of that as a header level one. It's the most important headline in the newspaper. And similarly, in a web page, you have an element, H1, and that is the first level of header. It's the most important. Like so. And you can see by default the browser renders this text is larger than the paragraph text because it's headline. It's supposed to grab attention. We could continue on. There are six levels of, of headlines, so technically there's an H2 element, like so. This is the second most important headline. Like that. Whoops. Typing is hard. There we go. And by default, you'll notice that the headline is rendered a little bit smaller than that header level one. So other elements that we can use, we have um, the anchor. And the anchor really is the essence of the internet. It's what we use to link web pages to other web pages, resources to resources. And what would the internet be if you didn't have links to click on, right? So the anchor element starts like this. A tag, and then to close A tag. Uh, and then you need text that's clickable. So. Let's say go to Google in between our open and close anchor tag. And if you take a look now in the, br the browser preview, that text isn't yet clickable. That's because we haven't given the browser a place to go if we were to click on the text. So this is the first chance we're going to see here an attribute used with an HTML element. And attributes just allow you to make more use of what HTML elements are capable of doing. So attributes, the href attribute for the anchor allows you to specify a URL that you're going to send users to on the web. So we're going to send these people to Google. When you're sending somebody somewhere using a link, you have to first start with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash to make it a link. It could also be an email, in which case it would look like mail to, all one word, colon, and then the email address. But we want a regular URL, so we'll say HTTP google.com. So now if you take a look at the browser preview, we have clickable text because we've given the browser a place to go using the hyperlink reference attribute. And notice that this attribute is structured href equals quotation mark. The value for the attribute 
close quotation mark, and then that first opening tag closes after the attribute. HTML is all about pattern matching, so when you get familiar with the patterns, the rest comes e more easily. So we've talked about our headlines, we've talked about paragraphs, and we've talked about anchors. We can also insert images into web pages, of course. And so let's take a look at how we would insert an image into this page. I'm going to insert an image into the second paragraph. And so in between the open and close paragraph tags here, what I'm going to do is uh, put the image element. The image element is a special case. It doesn't have a closing tag. So the basic tag is image space forward slash and then close caret. The image also requires attributes because you have to tell the browser where to look for the image you want to place on the page. And so the attribute for the image element is going to be src. And src stands for source. And we point our browser to wherever our image is. So if our image happens to be inside of the same folder as our HTML document, all we have to do is put the name of the image here. And I happen to know that I have an image titled location.png inside of my folder. You can see already it's, it's been placed in my document um, in the preview window. I'm going to go back to my finder window for a moment and you can see this is the folder that I'm working in. I have my index document and I also have two images, location and map. So all I did was I took the title, the name of this image, location.ping, and I put it as the value for my source attribute for this image element. I can also, oh, well, let's just do it again so you can see the process again. I open up the image element have my source attribute started, so attributes are structured as the attribute name, in this case source, and then equals open quotation mark the name of our file, image file specifically, close quotation mark, and then close the image element like so. So you can see now in the preview window we have two images, a map icon and a marker icon. Notice that even though I have my two image elements on separate lines in my HTML, they're on the same line, or they appear to be on the same line in my HTML document. It's because HTML doesn't recognize white space, so if I want to put a space or start a new line in between these two elements, I have to use a piece of markup to do that. So I can add a line break and a line break uh, looks like this. It's also one of those special case uh, tags, so br, like so. So br for break, and you can see after I typed that on line 12, the map icon, which showed up after my location icon, has been moved to a new line. If we put a break after the text, of our second paragraph where that period is, like so, we are. Now each of my icons is on its own line. So the break tag is gives you a hard break. Other ways to describe content with HTML elements. Things that are, you're going to find useful are going to be uh, lists. Uh, there are three different types of lists. There are ordered lists, unordered lists, and definition lists. We don't see definition lists so much, um, but we do see frequently the ordered and unordered lists. So an ordered list by default appears uh, sequentially by number, and an unordered list usually will have bullets. And they look like this. First, you have to state whether or not you want an ordered or unordered list. So let's use an unordered list first. So the element is UL for unordered list. It has a regular open and close tag. And anything you put in between the unordered 
list tags are going to be considered part of that list. And for each item in your list, you need to specify a list item. So li is that element tag. So we'll have item number, well, it's not sequential, so we'll say fruit, apples. So that's the first item on our list. We need a second item. Oranges. Oops, I should stop touching my touchpad. Like so. And I got some wonky indenting there, so we'll fake the funk. And let's have a third item in our list. Uh, zucchini is not a fruit, is it? <laughs> About lemons. There. So we have an unord unordered list with three list items, and you can see that reflected in our HTML preview on the right hand side. An ordered list looks very similar, only instead of using the UL element, you use OL for ordered list. But the pattern is the same. In our ordered list, we need list items. And those list items, whatever they need to be, uh, things we need to do in the morning, wake up. And we need to do that first, or else not much else is going to get done. And of course, we want to eat breakfast, because I'm a breakfast freak. All right, required. And the second thing we need in the day, of course, is the internet. All right, so notice now in our browser preview that we have another list. There are two spaces between these two lists by default. The browser renders that because it recognizes you have one list and then a second list. It makes them visually separate. And our ordered list now appears with numbers beside each of the list items. We have gone over a number of different HTML tags in this tutorial. There are many other HTML elements. These are just the basics that are going to help us get started. I recommend that you practice with these and become familiar with them and the attributes that you can use with them. Notice that the page, the way we have it now, isn't exactly pretty, and that's fine. HTML is all about structure and content. When we start talking about CSS, which will be another tutorial, uh, then we can start making things look good, giving them color, uh, giving them a little bit of space so you have some white space on your page to make things look like they've been purposefully formatted. So that's what we have for this tutorial. The next tutorial, uh, we're going to talk about CSS and we're going to talk too about divs and spans and how we can use them in our HTML pages and hopefully that will help you get started and begin to feel more comfortable with HTML. We're not using a fancy WYSIWYG editor here because it's really important to learn how to code by hand. Uh, sometimes WYSIWYG editors, they, they jumble up code depending on what's going on. You know, they're much better than they used to be. But when something does break, it's very important to know how to troubleshoot your HTML and how to fix it. So learning to code by hand is a good skill to have, even if you can do something much faster in, in something like Dreamweaver, which is great. Once you learn the basics, then you can go out and learn how to work faster and more efficiently with Dreamweaver.